What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel online at www.whatsupinthesky.com and you're back for another space news edition. The other day we had a special edition after the SpaceX rocket exploded um, so I'm not going to take too much time on it. If you want to check the uh, last news report we did, it was on that. Um, what a shame. This was their third shot trying to make it up. Um, basically they're trying to make this thing a reusable rocket, these Falcon 9s. And I tell you what, it's going to be hard to land that thing on a, a platform. Uh, it, they'll get it, though. They'll get it. Um, I'll leave this. Go ahead and leave this link in the description below, just in case. Um, also, we're going to be talking about Cirrus, um, that pyramid that came out, some DARPA plans. Earth and Mars may have similar origins. Um, all sorts of good stuff we've got coming up here. And as we move right along, I've been talking about Cirrus a lot. Um, the dwarf planet that sits out between Jupiter and Mars. And uh, here we go. NASA observes three-mile-high pyramid on Cirrus, but bright spots remain a mystery. This is from the Huffington Post. Um, check it out here. You've seen this if you watch my channel a lot. Here are the bright spots that still remain a mystery. Right now we're on the second pass, and it won't be until I think, believe July 7th when we're going to get a better view of it. We're going to get a little bit more closer and uh, a much better view of the, the situation, the actual thing itself. But here's what was interesting as it came out, and I haven't done the video on this right here. And I'll show you. Let me zoom in on it. They found what seems to be a three-mile-high pyramid. Now, uh, NASA is, of course, saying this is just the, um, let's see, per a press release from NASA. Dawn uses a suite of instruments to analyze the light reflected off Cirrus, therefore helping scientists identify the minerals on the dwarf planet. At this point, the bright spots are thought to be ice or salt. So that's their, that's, that's their um, take on, basically, the, the lights. Okay, of course, which I, that's what I've been saying for a while, what they think it is. Now, Dawn also snapped a photo of a mountain, a three-mile high, and it's shaped like a pyramid that protrudes from otherwise smooth area of the Cirrus sur surfaces. We circled the mountain in yellow below. So check it out. Uh, I'm going to leave the link to this one as well. It's interesting that it's got this big, huge mountain right here. Right next to it is almost like a divot um, or crater mark. It's very interesting to see the two together. And in the middle of that crater, it looks like there's three piles of something. So maybe one day we'll be sending uh, sending probes and rovers to places like this all depends what we find up there it's going to be interesting to see very interested to see what these bright spots are i know that we've left a lot of comments on the other the other video i think i have 12,000 views right now the last serious one i did pretty cool now this guy uh this is the pyramid on mars this was a video i did about three days ago where i was at uh, firefly festival when this came out and uh, paranormal crucible which uh, is a channel here on youtube uh, I've had my uh, ups and downs with them. They they've posted a lot of stuff that is not what it seems to be, and it's it's very easily debunked. So I've debunked a couple of their things, but this was pretty neat. The little uh, pyramid up there. What's cool is it made national news. So basically, when this stuff goes out, and this could be NASA is saying it's basically just a, uh, a volcanic rock, and it's not as big as they're saying it is. They're uh, NASA's claiming it's only you know just just about that big. A couple, uh, like a foot or two, not the size of a small car, as the uh, person at Paranormal Crucible or the, the actual group that maintains that. It's a uh, conglomerate of people that, that do it. They've got a bunch of different uh, channels. They do a lot of the UFO stuff, and like I said, it's just some of the stuff they put up there is just blatantly fake, but that there made viral, and what happens is when that stuff goes viral, a lot of people start coming in and checking out uh, the legit pages, like like my page. I try and keep my stuff legit. Uh, Martian Archaeology, Chris's over at Mars Anomaly, the Olympus Sky. You know, I could name it and keep going on and naming different ones. Uh, if you check my page and look at people I support, that's where you're going to find where I think the legit things are. You know, not stuff like third phase of the moon. I don't give those guys the time of day. So keep on rolling right along. DARPA plans to terraform Mars with genetically engineered organisms. I'm gonna, I am gonna. haven't read you guys anything in a little while. But I'm going to read this one to you. I thought this was kind of cool. The idea of genetically engineering living things makes a lot of people feel uneasy, including science fiction writers who often caution against such practices in their novels. Although humans genetically engineering plants and animals have been going on for hundreds of years, Defense 
Advanced Research Projects Agency, which is DARPA. Now, DARPA is in control of everything when it comes to the high tech. You know, GPS, DARPA, and them were working on years ago. We're talking 20, 30 years ago. This, their technology that they, they're so far ahead of us when it comes to this stuff. Uh, so DARPA researchers are hoping to take this to the next level by genetically engineering organisms that can fix Earth's damaged environment and eventually terraform Mars. Um, at a recent DARPA dis a recent conference, DARPA discussed its plans to engineer plants, bacteria, and algae that could grow on an otherwise barren Martian surface. Um, DARPA wants to refine and apply these skills so that someday we can warm up Mars and thicken its atmosphere for future colonization. Um, from simple to complex organisms. According to Jackson, DARPA's new biological technologies lab has spent the past year learning how to genetically engineer organisms beyond just E. coli and yeast. That's great, they're messing with E. coli. <laughs> there are, <laughs> wonderful. There are anywhere from 30 million, you guys know I'm laughing hopefully at that. That's, it's, they're, they mess with all these, these bacterias and stuff. It's amazing that, that half the stuff that gets out probably comes from us. Half of these sicknesses that people end up getting and, and it ends up coming from some of these plants. Um, there are anywhere from 30 million to 30 billion organisms on Earth. Uh, we use right now for engineering biology, said Jackson. Using bacteria and other microorganisms, DARPA is investigating how to take the best genes from particular living things and edit them into forms of life. They create newer forms of disgruntled life. I don't know why they cross out disgruntled there. Even DARPA plans to genetically engineer more complex multicellular organisms. All right, helping to make this process simpler, it's a software program that DARPA and some other partners have created called DTA G view, which Jackson has dubbed the Google Maps of genomes. It's pretty interesting. So basically, they're collecting all sorts of information, and it, they're trying to fix our environment first. So they're gonna they're gonna fix us up, and then they're gonna terraform Mars. So Jackson said, after natural or man-made disaster, it may be possible to engineer new types of extremely mobile organisms. I don't know, not say that word right there. Capable of surviving in scar, say, <laughs> scarred wastelands. So basically, they're just DARPA. It has uh, they've been doing this forever. They're, they're, they play God with certain things. You know, that, that's whether you believe in God or not. They, 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 uh, they really push the technology as far as they possibly can. Uh, and some of the DARPA projects I've seen in the past is pretty interesting. This is from Tech Gen Mag. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right there. They're a pretty decent. Uh, pretty decent uh, I found a lot of good stuff on there. So Once again, we're going to go back here to Earth and Mars may have shared seeds of life. I just kind of thought this was interesting. Um, let's see if I should read this whole thing or, or just kind of skim through it. We might be able to find evidence our own origin is most unlikely place, and this place is Mars. So basically they're talking about a time on Earth where, uh, let's see, it was 140 million miles Mars orbits from us, okay? And during this period of the late heavy bombardment, this was about 3.8 billion years ago, uh, to 4 billion years ago, whether, you know, there's 0.2 billion years really makes a difference. The planets were pummeled with asteroids and comets, which have provided the water to much of Earth's oceans. Earth and Mars were, in a sense, connected to each other by this violent era. So, Mars and Earth kept throwing rocks at each other for a very long time. Its life spawned on one planet. It could have clung to one or more of these samples and traveled to the other, a process scientists called panspermia. But if Earth likely did, but if early Earth likely did make it to Mars, it would have needed a hospital arrival. Today, the planet is bleak and barren, resembling Earth's most desolate deserts. That's if you want to believe what they say, or if you want to believe what some of the pictures say. Maybe it's a little bit different. It has a fairly, uh, with its thin atmosphere and almost completely waterless surface. Any life that landed on Mars today would have a difficult time taking hold. But in the past, when rocks were flying, Mars likely boasted a more habitable environment. At the time when life appeared on Earth, Mars did have an ocean. It had volcanoes, it had lakes, and it had deltas. Yet, unlike Earth, the red planet quickly lost its hold on habitability. So, when life exploded on the surface of Earth, then everything went south from Mars. Because Mars lacks a protective magnetic field, the sun's solar winds stripped it of its atmosphere and exposed the surface to bombardment from cosmic rays and ultraviolet light. Most of the water left on the surface escaping into space. Only a few pockets remain on the surface today and at the poles. Now, 
there's no life possible on the surface of Mars today, but it still might be hiding underground. Now, this is a picture right here of, uh, of this is La Conacarbor Lake. It lies at the top of the Andes Mountains where there's low oxygen, thin altitude, high ultraviolet radiation. Basically what you'd find on Mars, and there's water right there, just a having a pool. Now, if you search my videos and look for water on Mars, what's up in the sky 37, you're going to find plenty of water. There's water just where we've dropped our rover in the Gale Crater. It's one of the, one of the most barren places that they could have um, you know it, on where we dropped in the planet we found water running water water seeping out from under so um, I think when they uh, they oversell that too much that it's a dry barren planet so we'll, we'll see as times go on all right now I thought this was kind of cool NASA explains why June 3rd will get an extra second so the day will officially be a bit longer than usual on Tuesday June 30th because of an extra second or a leap second will be added Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down a bit so leap seconds are a way to account for that <laughs> so basically we've uh, figured out a way to do it this video is a minute most and people, uh, 51 are exactly seconds 24 hours in a day the ground Let's only moves during an earthquake and the Earth rotates just like it does on a globe. And generally speaking, that makes sense. But scientists who like to find out exactly what's going on know the ground actually moves around quite a bit. Days are never quite 24 hours, and the Earth actually wobbles on its axis in a very particular way as it revolves around the Sun. Scientists know all this by using a technique called very long baseline interferometry, which is basically a fancy term for using radio dishes to very precisely... Well, that's as far as we get. All right. Do we get it again? <laughs> Good old NASA video. Basically measure the Earth's orientation. VLBI was originally developed back in the 60s to take pictures of quasars. Early on, though, someone realized that because quasars never really move, you could use them as reference points, throw the whole process in reverse, and figure out how all the telescopes were moving relative to one another. Basically, when a quasar emits a radio wave, that wave reaches different telescopes at different times. For astronomy, you'd use a computer to imitate a giant telescope and get a good picture of the quasar. But if you instead pay close attention to the time differences, you can use geometry to figure out how far apart the telescopes are. And by making lots of those measurements, you can start to see how the ground beneath the telescopes moves around, when you have to adjust your clock, and that the Earth wobbles on its axis as it moseys around the sun. So the next time you feel like you've had a long day, or that your house is a few millimeters from where you last left it, you can switch on a bunch of radio telescopes, point them at quasars, and find out just how right you are. All right, so that's why we're going to be having an extra second that day. All right, strictly speaking, a day lasts about 86,400 seconds. That is the case according to the time standard that people use in their daily lives. Um, UTC time, the atomic time, is a duration of one second is based on extremely predictable electromagnetic transitions and atoms of Celsius. Wow, that was, a, that was a mouthful right there, guys. <laughs> These transactions are so reliable that the Celsius clock can accurately one second in four, uh, 1,400,000 years. All right. So basically, we're going to have an extra second. I'm sure we're not going to notice it in any way. I'm not sure how that will work out on computers, but we will find out. I thought that was cool. That's on the NASA website. As always, I leave these links below. This is just stuff I thought you might find interesting. Like I said, my space news I try and keep. Some of this stuff comes from what's up in the sky. We have a wonderful group of people that add to the news stuff. Um, they put their articles up in there, and I get a lot from there. And this is just my personal browsing that I do. So I thought this was kind of cool just because it'll look at these. Astronauts need flexible space suits for Mars. Check that thing out. That thing's pretty cool. It definitely looks a little bit different than the other. So the next couple of decades could see astronauts go many places. The asteroid, the moon, or even Mars. But current space suits used in the International Space Station will likely need to be replaced to those exploring jobs done. Because we need to get these things done. So with difficulty today's suits is that they're designed for microgravity work. They would make walking in an environment with sustainable gra gravity difficult. Because of the lower torso as the suit is stiff and the difficult for the wearer to bend at the waist. Better mobility would be needed for doing geological field work. So basically, these new things are going to have to be able to move down below and up top. And they're also going to be able to have to keep certain, uh, you know, your oxygen up. It's going to have to be airtight. 
Pretty interesting. Look at these. Uh, I, I thought these are just cool. I thought you guys would like this. You can pin it if you want. Hey, you know what? On What's Up in the Sky, you can actually pin it now. I've got, uh, for you Pinterest people, I've got pin it buttons on all the articles. So check out What's Up in the Sky. You can start pinning our stuff. Tell me that's not cool. It looks she's, I guess she's supposedly holding hammers and guns. <laughs> these look like guns, don't they? What are we going to be uh, invading other space? The NASA's Z2 spacesuit, which is more flexible for walking on distant surfaces. So ISS plans to be testing these things. Smart suits and future spacesuits will play a couple of technology trends that will make it easy for astronauts to understand how the spacesuit is holding up. I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of good stuff. If you watch the movies, uh, um, It'll, th these suits already have like your biometrics, they keep your, your pulse and all sorts of good stuff, the medicals. So. Another thing I thought this was neat coming up, and I'm going to let you guys go, October Comet flyby calls by a mind-blowing Martian meteor shower. We talked about this when it came by. Maven basically made it right before the, before the uh, comet sliding spring came roaring past the red planet. And uh, they're saying now that this must have been a mind-blowing meteor shower. Um, the MAVEN's instruments were put as soon as the spacecraft arrived, even before they were fully commissioned, to measure the effects of the comet on the Martian atmosphere. All right, based on the strong signal of magnesium and iron measurements seen by MAVEN's imaging ultraviolet spectrum, Schneider said that the hourly meteor rate overhead on Mars must have been tens of thousands of shooting stars per hour, four hours. How bad would that be? That's awesome. I'm not sure anyone alive has ever seen that. And the closest thing in human history might have been the 1833 Leonid shower. Now, that was an amazing shower that happened back then. If you want to do a little reading about it, there's a uh, click here, and I'm sure it'll take you to a space.com article, tell you a little bit more about it. But all right, so they had a uh, NASA put out a navig like a, basically, this is directly from Maven. Um, these are the images of the comet as it got there. It has, a, like, the first 40 seconds of it was an animation, which, you know, how they do it over at NASA. So I cut the animation. Let's look at the comet as it flies by. All that. That's basically we get through all these. Uh, see, here's what I was talking about. Watch. It's all fancy, fancy, fancy. Then we get a couple pictures. I'm just going to let it run so we get the couple pictures. Here they are right there. That's a lot of junk coming off of it. Did you see the big flash in there? Remember there was a big deal about the flash and everything that came through? Um, if you look at the uh, Thunderbolt projects, you can they have a great couple uh a couple videos about that when Siding Spring stopped by Mars. So, all right, guys, what's up in the sky.com? Come check us out. As always, below in the article link, you're going to find a link to all these articles. The uh, forums at what's up in the sky.com are taking off. All sorts of good people in there. We'd love to invite you to come in, sign up for an account. Right now, we got a lot of spam bots signing up. We've added messaging to it. I'm going to go ahead and do a video here soon talking about it. Um, as you can see, I think I. NASA offered me the ability to have fan funding, where I think there's a little button now that says, if you enjoy this, support this channel. I'm going to go ahead and build, I'm build, taking my old room I used to stay in, I'm going to build a TV studio in there. So if any of you guys want to help out, I'm not begging for money, but just hit that little button right there. It's on my homepage, and I think it might even be under the video somewhere. I'm not sure how that works. It says, you know, it offers give a dollar, give five dollars, give five million dollars. What do you got? Whatever you got. So, <laughs> all right, guys, much love to you. It's been a while. I'm glad to be back. Um, the concert was awesome. It, it's just been a wonderful time. The, uh, like I said, lots of good stuff coming up. Even though the the Curiosity rover has been in conjunction with like the uh, the solar and everything. We haven't seen much coming from it for probably 20 days. The stuff that just popped up, yeah, it's all right, but. I've got a whole bunch. I got like 300 videos or 300 images that people have sent me that need videos. So we got plenty of work to do over here at What's Up in the Sky 37. And I will continue to do it. Much love to you guys. Take it easy. I hope you're having a good one. Peace.